Hello everybody and uh, welcome to this presentation of our paper Optimized Software Implementations for the Lightweight Option Scheme 4KE. My name is Arne and I wrote this paper together with uh, Elena, José, Angshuman and Anton. I'd like to introduce you to the topic of our paper. Uh, first of all, it's about 4KE, which is an authenticated encryption scheme based on the novel uh, Fork Skinny Primitive. 4KE is currently a second round candidate in the NIST like crypto competition. Um, the goal of this competition is to define a new set of standards that are better suited for constrained devices as they are used, for example, in uh, the Internet of Things, smart cards, or the uh, automotive industry. And I work to develop optimized software implementations for the 4KE candidate. Um, and with our optimized and secure implementations, we target different devices. Now, uh, what are the contributions of our paper? First of all, we analyzed uh, the existing implementations and found a way to optimize the decryption of these implementations. We also propose new platform specific implementations uh, for platforms with no risk of timing attacks. We develop a table based implementation. And for platforms with parallel hardware, we develop an implementation that benefits from the parallelism that is present in 4KE. The implementations are benchmarked on two platforms, one with an ARM Cortex-M0 core and one with an A9. Uh, lastly, we compare the performance of our software with those of other uh, skinny-based schemes. Here you can see a short overview of what I want to talk to you about. Uh, first of all, I will give you a short introduction to the 4KE cipher without going uh, too much into the details. Then I will present uh, the design and performance of three implementations. The portable implementation that uh, targets uh, to be optimized for a broad range of platforms, the lookup table implementation and the uh, SIMD parallel implementation. At the end, I will summarize the conclusions and, and list some takeaways from uh, this presentation. As I said, 4KE is an uh, authenticated encryption scheme based on a new type of primitive called uh, a fork cipher. The fork cipher that is used in 4KE is called fork skinny uh, because it is based on the skinny uh, cipher. After a certain amount of iterations of the round function, two branches are created and the round function is further iterated in uh, both branches. In this way, uh, for skinny can uh, calculate two independent permutations of the, in of the input with a reduced uh, cost uh, compared to just uh, calculating the entire iteration twice. This specific design tries to optimize the encryption of small to uh, very small messages. Why 4KE is, is faster for small messages can be seen when you look at the modes of operation. I included figures uh, for both the parallel and sequential mode of operation in the next slide, but I uh, will not go over all the details of, of these uh, modes of operations of 4KE. Um, the important thing to see is that there is no fixed cost for processing the, the nonce or generating the tag because this uh, double output is available. Uh, this is opposed to standard block cipher modes of operations as, such as GCM, where there is always an extra iteration uh, of the primitive, as you can see here. Um, because this overhead of the extra primitive call can be dominant, uh, dominant for the smallest messages, uh, that is where 4KE can uh, perform better. Uh, here is the parallel mode of operation of 4 and this is the sequential uh, mode of operation, but I will not go into details. Um, now let's focus on how to uh, actually implement 4 in software when you want software that is portable across different platforms while maintaining good performance and security. Um, the first thing to note is that all implementations I uh, will describe here focus on optimizing the fork skinny primitive. 
in order to uh, achieve low latency,ncy and does not focus on the modes of operations. That means we uh, try to minimize the amount of clock cycles needed to calculate the round function and the, the key schedule or tweak key schedule, as it is called here, um, that are used uh, for the iterations. Other important parameters next to, to the amount of clock cycles are uh, the code size and uh, the memory usage of the implementation. The round function and tweaky schedule are depicted on the on the right. In these pictures, uh, in these pictures, you can see that the internal state and and the so-called tweakies um, are are represented by four by four matrices. Um, for 128 bit instances of 4K, each cell in in such a matrix is an 8 bit value. The portal implementations are also designed to execute in constant time. Uh, in order to be secure on, on a broad range of platforms. And um, we verified the, the constant time execution using the dude is my code constant time uh, tool. An optimized and portable implementation of 4KE was already made by uh, Rice Weatherly, who made uh, such implementations for almost all second round candidates of the NIST uh, Lightweight Crypto Commission. In his 32-bit uh, implementation, each row of the internal state uh, matrix is saved in one word, and all steps of the round function are calculated on the entire row. In order to achieve constant time execution, the nonlinear part of the round function, which is the S box, is calculated according to its definition rather than looking uh, the value up in a table. When analyzing the implementations I just described, we saw that a lot of time was spent on duplicate calculations of the tweaky schedule. Because when, when the fork cipher is reversed, the cipher text, uh, which is C1 on, on the picture here at the bottom right, um, is the input. And the tweaky date at the end of uh, the tweaky schedule needs to be known um, in order to start reversing the rounds and uh, calculating back to C0 and uh, the message. In the existing implementations by Weatherly, this was achieved by uh, fast forwarding the entire tweaky schedule um, at the end, and then reversing it to get back to the input message. And then finally calculating also forward the branch that goes to C0. All these duplicate calculations can be avoided if uh, the schedule is only calculated once and the portion that needs to be uh, added to the internal state is saved in memory. Um, this way, this, this, uh, this portion that was stored can be used when it is needed and no duplicate calculations are needed. Uh, this allows for a speed up of uh, up to 38% on our platforms. And in the same time, uh, also achieves a code size reduction. Um, the maximum amount of memory that is needed to store all the intermediate tweakies uh, need to be added to the internal state is uh, 696 bytes. In this slide, you can see the results for all portable implementations on our uh, tested platforms, which are the Cortex A9 and the Cortex M0. The speed is expressed as uh, the average amount of clock cycles that are per byte of input. And the code size and memory usage are expressed in um, in bytes. The primary instance of 4KE is indicated in red. Um, I won't go over all the numbers, but the important thing to see here is that with a pre-processed tweaky schedule, a speed up is achieved, the code size is reduced, and the RAM size is uh, increased. You can see that the difference between decryption and encryption is very much reduced after uh, the optimization. Next to our own benchmarking, we also submitted our codes to other benchmarking initiatives, such as the one from the Gen Laboratory for Safe and Secure Systems. Um, on the results they collected, the decryption optimization is also clearly visible as a reduction uh, of the difference between encryption and decryption. The results from this slide were collected on an uh, ST32F7, which features uh, an ARM Cortex M7, M7 core. Now let's go to our uh, lookup table implementation. 
we made a derivation similar to uh, the AES um, T table implementation to calculate the effect of each step of the skinny round function on a column of the internal state uh, matrix. This allowed us to define the round function as a combination of table lookups. The math is uh, included in the figures on the right, but I will not give a complete explanation here. The hard part of transforming the round function of skinny into table lookups is that the addition of key uh, and constant material um, is done before the mixing of the columns. Uh, this has as a consequence that they cannot just be added uh, afterwards uh, and obtain, obtain the same result. Um, eventually, we arrived at the definition of the round function that you can see in this slide. Um, Loops are performed in four different uh, T tables based on the current internal state. And then uh, afterwards, the mixed and shifted constant and tweaky material are added to each of the columns. Implementing this definition of the round function require, requires uh, four tables of a kilobyte each, plus uh, adult tables for the round constants. An entire round of skinny can now be calculated as 18 lookups and 19 XOR additions. Um, because storing four kilobytes of tables can be a bit much, it is good to know that it is also possible to use only one table. Uh, the extra computational cost introduced by using only a single table is very minimal. For the transformation uh, that, we that I just described to be possible, um, the non step needs to come first and the shift rows step needs to come before the mixed columns step. Otherwise it is not possible. This means that for the decryption, we had a problem. In order to make a table-based implementation possible, the order of operations was reordered and a new inverse round had to be defined. As a consequence, the first and final round are now different uh, from the other rounds. The benefit is that in this newly defined inverse round, the additions of constants and keys are done at the end, which allows for an efficient table-based implementation. The results of the lookup table implementation can be, find, can be found on this slide, but because this are these are just a lot of numbers, I summarized the most important things uh, for you in the next slide. Um, so what we see, um, maybe first uh, I'll make an important note. Um, an implementation with lookup tables is only suited for platforms where uh, cache timing attacks are not possible. Um, that is why we only tested, uh, of course, on the ARM Cortex-M0, which has notice uh, at all. Uh, for encryption, the speed up of 20% uh, was achieved compared to the uh, portable implementations. As you can see from, uh, from the figure, the best results are achieved when the tables are stored in uh, RAM memory. Another interesting thing to see is that the difference in performance for using four tables or only one table is very small. Uh, for decryption, um, the speed up is even higher because of the more efficient uh, new inverse round. In this slide, I try to visualize uh, the impact on uh, the memory cost of the different variants of the, of the table implementation. First of all, the code size, uh, without uh, including the tables, is reduced uh, compared to the portable implementations because of the simpler uh, round function that we have here. Uh, storing the tables, of course, introduces an extra cost, but this can be greatly reduced when using a single lookup table. Um, another possibility is to store the tables in RAM memory if enough RAM uh, is, of course, available. As more and more embedded processors start including parallel hardware extensions, we explore the possibilities of optimizing 4KE implementations on such systems. Many of the existing parallel implementations of uh, other ciphers are based on the principle of uh, bit slicing. But for bit slicing to work, 
parallel calculations of the primitive are needed. This is only possible, of course, when a parallel mode of operation uh, is used and when enough data is available. As for an example, AES uh, bit sliced implementation works best when eight blocks of data are processed in parallel. This means uh, 1024 bits of input data are needed for uh, this to work optimally. For short messages, bit slicing is not well suited. The overhead of conversion to a bit slice representation is too high when not enough blocks are available. That is why in our implementations of 4KE, we focused on, parallelism, on the parallelism that is available within the primitive instead of the parallelism of calculating many primitives in parallel. This way, we try to reduce the latency of a single call to the primitive. The parallel hardware that we used was the ARM Neon SIMD. Our processor had a 128-bit SIMD available. Um, the data level parallelism within the fork skinny primitive is situated at two levels. First, you have the parallelism at the level of the round. In our implementations, this is exploited by calculating the S-box for all cells of the internal state in parallel. A second level of data level parallelism is introduced by the forking step. After the forking step, two branches are calculated in parallel. This means that the round function can also be calculated for both states in parallel. As only 128-bit parallelism was available, this extra level uh, in our case only be exploited for uh, the 64-bit variant uh, or instance of 4KE, but a similar implementation could also be designed for other uh, instances if 256-bit uh, SIMD was available. The sequential tweaky schedule that we have in um, 4KE or in fork skinny hinders uh, the parallelism of the, the two branches. And that is why in, in uh, such an implementation, uh, pre-processed -pro pre and stored tweaky is needed here. Um, for decryption, the parallelism of uh, the fork is uh, not available. In order to use the Neon SIMD hardware in our implementations, we made assembly, assembly implementations of uh, the parallel S-box calculations, and we obtained uh, the following results. For 128-bit instances, the parallel calculations of the S-box reduced the amount of clock cycles by 30%. Code size is also reduced, and RAM usage stays equal. For 64-bit for the 64-bit instance, where during encryption also uh, the fork-level parallelism is exploited, a speed-up of 29% is achieved for encryption and 17% for decryption. The smaller speed-up here is explained by the fact that the simpler S-box used in uh, in this instance is a smaller part of the total uh, computation time. This slide again contains all the numbers, uh, but we will not go, uh, go over them. The big benefit of being able to calculate both branches in parallel becomes clear uh, when you look at this slide. From our results, we found that using the NEON assembly implementations, a single round needs 95 cycles, and the calculation of two rounds in parallel needs 112 clock cycles. This means that calculating two branches now only takes 1.10 times as much cycles as calculating a single branch. Without fork level parallelism, this was approximately uh, 1.6 times as much. Other skinny based encryption schemes have no fork and thus always calculate just a single branch. Using these numbers, and because we know how many calls to the primitive are needed per message block, we can now calculate the difference in speed between forks and skinny based and other skinny based schemes. What we show in the graph is that if you have a primitive that takes 1.10 times as much time to calculate 
but eliminates the need for a fixed call to the primitive, you will faster for messages of up to 10 blocks in size. So finally, to conclude, we presented three types of implementations. First, we had portable implementations in which we optimized the decryption. Then we had two implementations that target platforms with specific properties. The lookup table implementation is useful when no timing attacks are possible. It calculates the function as a combination of table lookups. The cost of this implementation can be minimized by using only a single table. A second platform specific implementation was developed for Neon SIMD hardware, where data level parallelism was exploited at two different levels and Neon SBOX implementations were made. All of the implementations presented in our work are also publicly available at my GitHub page. I think that the key takeaways of this presentation are that there is never one implementation that is perfect for each platform or each use case. There is all trade-off between code size, memory usage, and speed. When you know your platform has specific properties, these can be used to achieve better implementations. This is only possible when you have a versatile cipher such as 4KE, which allows for many different implementations. This was my presentation. Thank you for your attention.